So when I was in college, I exchanged phone numbers with a cute girl that I met in Calc 1. And then every time the phone rang, it was for her. That was confusing and annoying. The conversation that I really want to have with you about this phone is how much of a disruption it has the potential to be. So this is the Asus Zen Phone 2 that we're talking about. But first, the tech. Let's talk about the technology here. You want specs? You got them. There are a lot. This is the ZE551ML. First and foremost, this phone is powered by a 64-bit 2.3 gigahertz quad-core Intel Atom Z3580 CPU. This is the first smartphone with four gig of dual-channel DDR3. It has LTE Cat4+, Plus, uh, which is about uh, speed and LTE download speed of up to 250 megabit, unless you're testing it outside of an LTE lab, in which case <laughs> you're just never gonna see that in the real world because reasons. This model also has a whopping 64 gigabytes of internal EMMC flash memory. And that storage is rated at a maximum transfer speed of up to 160 megabytes per second. Though in our testing, it was about 130 35 megabytes per second, give or take, on the read speed. The write speed was a bit slower, well, considerably slower, but we'll get to that in the benchmarking section. I want to also talk about the 60 milliseconds touch response time. This is probably the biggest feature on this phone. It's not really something that you see talked about, but for me, this makes the phone feel faster. And this is really kind of huge for Android. Though I think the HTC um, One, the M8, was the first device to break the sub 65 milliseconds barrier on Android, meaning that from the time you touch to the time it does something, the minimum there is 65 milliseconds. Um, this phone is advertised as a 60 millisecond response time, but I think that it's actually faster than that for real world stuff because it's not just the touch response time that makes the phone feel snappy, it's also how fast it opens applications and how fast it responds and, and that sort of thing. This is something that merits further formal testing, but informally I will show you what we did. Basically I just set up two phones side by side and tapped the icons at the same time to launch Chrome, the Play Store, etc. The Zen Phone 2 was astonishingly faster than the Moto X, even the Note 4. Um, I suspect it is not just the touch delay at work. Historically, this has been a problem for Android, but I thought as of early 2014 that this was basically taken care of. Because of this, the Zenfone 2 really just feels snappy when you're moving around opening applications and that sort of thing. When you touch something, it happens immediately. Now, strangely, I didn't get, experience the same delay dragging down from the, uh, like the, the system tray at the top of the screen. It was just tapping and launching icons. The GPU is a 6430 Power VR at 533 megahertz, and the phone ships with Android Lollipop. And I was delighted to see that out of the box, I can get OTA updates, over the air updates from Asus just fine. In fact, I had two right out of the box, um, and it let me download them without really any trouble. The Wi Fi is 802.11ac, that's a one by one configuration, so that operates at a speedy 433 megabit. Um, and I can tell you that downloads on this phone. Uh, through Wi-Fi were the fastest that I've ever seen on a phone. Downloading those OTA updates from Asus was, uh, on the, the connection we have here is pretty speedy, it was in the megabytes per second range. Not megabits, but megabytes. Pretty much I hit download update and the, the update was downloaded. I mean, it, it couldn't have been more than three or four seconds. So that was kind of astonishing. There are two cameras on this phone. There's a 12.6 megapixel rear camera. That's a four by three aspect ratio uh, with an F 2.0 aperture lens. The optics are from Largan. I think that's how that's pronounced. And the sensor is a Toshiba sensor. The flash is a dual LED flash, but the LEDs have different color tones in order to capture more realistic color tone overall. A really slick camera app is also bundled that lets you do a lot of cool stuff with the camera, mainly automatic HDR photos with something they call Super HDR and high res photos even in low light. All this is called Pixel Master 2.0. The front camera is a five megapixel camera and they also bundled some software that lets you take a panoramic selfie. But I just don't think I could bring myself to do a selfie. So we're gonna have to skip over that part. The phone also has NFC, which we use to transfer the accounts, documents, and other stuff from the Moto X, which was basically a flawless experience. I was surprised at how well that part of it worked. The one hiccup that we did encounter was when I was asked to enroll uh, for an Asus account. Um, I filled that out, but then I got error 100, and I'm not sure why. However, let me continue on with the, in the installation of the phone or the setup of the phone, and then later I got an email from Asus saying, hey, we enrolled you, everything's fine, click here to verify. So I guess there was some problem with the setup servers or something like that. This was a phone that we bought from Amazon, so it must be a problem on the server. Not sure. 
physical inspection of the device was interesting. There's no buttons or anything on the sides, except for this one divot on the right hand side, which is really little more than a fingernail hold needed for unsnapping the back cover. There is a button and a headphone jack on the top of the device, and then there's a USB 2.0 micro connector on the bottom of the device. If we pop the back, we can see that the back has a dual SIM setup and a spot for a micro SD card. So you can have a micro SD card. ASUS says that it will work with up to 64 gigabyte micro SD card, so you could have 128 gigabytes of, of flash on the phone. But we tested a 128 gig micro SD card that we had here and it worked fine. So I'm not sure if they just haven't updated their specs or if that's you know, 128 gig is not officially finalized yet or what the deal is there. But the 128 gig card that we tested worked fine. In the middle of the back, we can see that there's a silver rocker button. This is the volume control. Um, at the bottom is a cutout for a speaker and the battery looks like it might be removable if you take out about a dozen Phillips screws. I might be brave enough to try that after I get back from Computex, but I need this for the Computex trip. The overall design and feel of the phone, it's a beveled design. Uh, like the Moto X or the Moto G, what that means is that it's kind of a crescent in your hand. It's thinner on the edges and sort of thicker in the middle. This actually, for me, makes it a more natural hold. Now the power button's on the top, but you can wake it by double tapping the screen. So most of the time you'll never really need to hit the power button anyway. On the front, there are three permanent buttons um, for home, back, and context. Um, those That's, you know, an Android thing. Uh, the front is largely dominated by the display. 72% of the front area is dedicated to the display. The, the case and screen pick up scratches really easily. I'd only had the Zenfone 2 out of the box for maybe an hour before I noticed that there were a few extremely fine scratches on the screen. I think this happened when I took the phone out and I laid it face down on the rubber mat on my desk in order to shoot the back of the phone. And so I moved it around a little bit on the rubber mat and that seems to have caught, you know, a grain of sand or something and scratched the display. So I don't know if that's just my bad luck or something deeper with the design of the phone, but if this is gonna be a daily driver, definitely get a case, definitely get a screen protector. Now there were no headphones or other accessories in the box other than the charger. However, the charger that came with this phone rapid charges and can get to around 60% charge in 39 minutes. How they do that is something they call Boost Master, not Beast Master, but Boost Master. And what Boostmaster does is it delivers 18 watts of power through USB. So we're talking about we're talking about overclocking USB basically. You're going to be running USB at 9 volts and 2.1 amps in order to deliver that kind of power in order to get the phone charged to 60% in 39 minutes. So let's talk about the software on the phone. Splendid is the application on this that's kind of like Flux, except it Flux sets the color temperature based on the time of day so that it sort of mirrors like a setting sun which is supposedly easier on your biological clock. Splendid lets you change it at any time and it, there's no time component to it, but it works kind of similarly. So after I captured enough footage, hopefully for this review, I was really tempted to root the phone. Now the bootloader is locked. I think there's a way to unlock the bootloader. I'm not entirely sure, getting ready to go to Computex. I need to figure that out. That's sort of a big deal. I believe the bootloader can be unlocked. I know for a fact the phone can be rooted. That's totally easy and possible to do. However, I'm gonna show you something that I did that is just my own personal preference that does not require rooting with Android 5.0 on most devices and does not require root on this particular device that helps the usability. And that is you can reduce the font size to something less than you actually can with the phone. Now I'm not talking about display settings. You know, look at these fonts, look at these fonts on the screen. This is huge, am I blind? This is crazy. The font selector here in display settings on Android with the out of the box setting ranges from geriatric to Professor Farnsworth. This is crazy. I don't, this is, I just, no. It also seems like if you select, you know, small here, it's on normal by default. If you select small, I can't get any more emails or more items on the screen. It just makes the font smaller and gives it more white space. No, I want the font to be smaller so that I can have more stuff on the screen. This is dumb. This is not a problem with the, the Asus side of things. Uh, this is a problem with Android and the DPI settings. And so what we do in this situation is we get out ADB, we install the drivers, so that we can, can connect to the phone through ADB. We install the Android development kit just for giggles because uh, we're, we're probably going to need the Android development kit to root the phone later. <laughs> uh, but you don't, need to, uh, you don't need to root the phone to do this. So we're going to use ADB and we're going to use ADB to set the phone uh, DPI. I'm not really sure what the ideal DPI is for this device yet because I haven't used it enough. I'm going to say probably between 350 and 400. Um, right now with this setting, I'm running 400. So check out how this looks now. I've basically got an extra column for icons on my home screen. The font sizes are a lot more reasonable. Hey, I can get 10 emails on screen now. This is crazy. 
the web browsing is a lot more um, sane. It's not, <laughs> everything is not in like 40 point font size. This is a much more reasonable situation in terms of font scaling. The bundled apps also seem genuinely useful for the most part. The gestures app lets you draw gestures on the screen when it's locked to take you straight to an app of, of your choosing based on the gesture. But there are a couple things on the phone that will, you know, try to keep your RAM free or that does cleaning and that kind of thing. But I was delighted because when I went to add remove programs, I was able to tap uninstall and when I hit uninstall, it uninstalled the app. So it's not applications that are built in that I cannot get rid of. So that's nice. Okay, let's take a look at the benchmarks. If you wanna see the full benchmarks, you're gonna to have to head over to the article at techsyndicate.com. But we've got the 3D Mark benchmarks, the Antutu benchmarks and more. Now we don't usually talk about price and reviews because the reviews are gonna be on the internet for a long time and quite frankly, the price is gonna change. We'll do it here. On release day, on launch day, in the US, the Zenfone 2, the one, the model we've been reviewing, was $299. That's a pretty good deal. I mean, the benchmarks have it within spitting distance of the Note 4. It's basically a flagship device except for a few niggles that really, I mean, are really not a big deal in the grand scheme of things. This phone is game changing at $300. It really is, it's crazy. There's another model that's only $200 and the $200 model honestly is probably fine for most normal people. The $200 model swaps the 2.3 gigahertz CPU for a 1.8 gigahertz CPU and it goes down to two gigs of RAM instead of four. For normal people, that's completely fine. That's a completely reasonable Android phone. Um, that's a hell of a $200 phone. That is a, that's a really good deal. I suspect that in the future, those prices are going to just come down. So if you're watching this three years from now, it's like, oh, well, that seems a little high. Well, yeah, they're probably not $300 anymore. But on launch day, it was $200 and $300, which is real. it's a steal. It really is a steal. The Note 4 from Verizon, if you're gonna buy the Note 4 from Verizon, is $700. I, I could get two of these phones for that. And two of these phones would be dramatically way faster than the Note 4. So uh, this this phone is gonna be a disruptor and a game changer in terms of price because you can buy it. If there's no contract, you can use it with whatever carrier you, you want. It does dual SIM, micro SD. You could probably take the battery out if you really had to. If you're using T-Mobile and you know the T-Mobile contract free stuff and you don't want to have a your phone under contract because now you can get T-Mobile service not under a contract, but you can be under contract for your phone because it subsidizes the cost of your phone. This would be a really good choice for that. If you're gonna use this phone with T-Mobile, uh, that would be a good idea, but it also works with AT&T. This phone does not work with Sprint or Verizon. Uh, even though Sprint and Verizon do CDMA, it's a different kind of CDMA than the CDMA that this phone support. It does support a bunch of international features. There are also model variants that are not the 551 ML that support different frequencies depending on what region of the world that you're in. So be sure that you check out the web page and the different variants of this phone because you can get a world phone that is appropriate. It's like, oh, I'm an, I'm an American. I go to Canada. Covered. Oh, I'm an American. I fly to China sometimes. Covered. So there are different models that, that may be applicable to your situation. So to just run out and buy the first one that you see, be sure to do your homework on the different frequencies that are supported. So without getting too long-winded, the situation here with this phone is that the battery life is not abysmal. It's actually quite good considering what it does. And I really think the weakest link in the battery is the screen and not the CPU. And so while it's not necessarily a flagship killer, it is sort of toe to toe with flagship phones in a lot of cases, at least right now. It's quite good. It's so good that I feel ripped off paying, you know, five, six, seven hundred dollars for a phone ever again. Now, if that's retail price or subsidized in the cost of the contract, either way, you're still paying five, six, seven hundred dollars for a phone. This phone is within spitting distance of the Note 4. And again, that's seven hundred dollars if you buy it from Verizon. This phone is really, really interesting product, not just because of the technology, but because of the components of disruption. Anytime there's market disruption, it's good for the consumer. Almost anytime there's disruption, it's good for the consumer. But this is a really interesting product, and we should discuss it in the forums over at techsyndicate.com. If you guys wanna see more of this kind of content from us, where we're covering phones and consumer electronics and laptops, things like that, you're gonna to have to share the crap out of this, thumbs up it, and let us know in the comments. If you don't wanna see more video like this, cause there's a million phone reviews out there, then thumbs down it. But I think if we get the views and we get the thumbs up, then we can go to manufacturers and say, hey, you should send us stuff. Cause right now we're just buying all this stuff. Anything that you see like this that we review, we bought. So if you picked up one of these or you have any thoughts or there's anything that I've glossed over, 
head on over to the forums at techsyndicate.com. And I'll see you there. I'm Wendell. I'm signing out.